it's Nancy with Garden Scroll. I have been busy planting. Um, a lot of stuff was coming up in this pot, and I'm going to wait and see what they what they are. I'm not sure what they are. These little seedlings here, the volunteer came up. I put this little redhead coleus in here. And of course the Dusty Miller and the Silver Falls de Chandra and this little double petunia, which I'm not sure what color it is. It was in a four pack of mixed double petunias and they're all beautiful so it won't really matter. And then I put this little pot right back here. I started out wanting the pastel colors, which I did use. But I was thinking the cool color, but I just liked this little soft peachy color with the purple anyway. So, and there's a purple penta right back there. I'm hoping it will spread out and fill up that back part where you can also see it from the front. So, I think that's going to be pretty. And look at these gorgeous iris right here. Aren't they pretty? I think the sun is trying to come through the clouds and shining on them just right to give them a little glow. So this penny, we still haven't got the after shot for you because it's still in bed. But I'm going to go down just a little farther and show you one that is in bed. You can see it from here all the way down to right there but I'll go down and get a better shot of it for you this pretty brown and white is still a favorite for me and speaking of the soft cool pastels this is a beautiful iris in that color grouping it looks like all the bewildered beast irises are gone except this one it'll probably be gone after today One of the pretty blue irises look like there is going to be a couple of more coming out of those. Or these may be a darker iris. And there's more of the Shaker's Prayer iris. These are an heirloom iris I've learned. Uh, through one of my gardening books and uh, it it was actually here when I moved here and they were brought over when people came at first came to America so that made me really glad I didn't go ahead and get rid of them I thought of it I know I'm ashamed that I even thought of getting rid of this beautiful color but for some reason I couldn't get over this brown tan that looks like it's dying to me but it doesn't even look like that to me anymore i just love it the cat mats blooming also i love this little plant because it's a pretty little blue and it also stays blooming quite a while and it, it'll actually bloom again once you shear it off it'll bloom again later on in the season So here's our after shot. My husband said I needed to take when they were all just little buds. And then now that they're full, beautiful blooms, the rain did kind of make them a little raggedy looking, but mostly they're still pretty. This one's looking a little raggedy since the first time I showed it to you. It's probably my favorite bloom because it's the biggest. <laughs> Let me see what this one not back here, what it looks like. Oh, that's pretty too. Let me see one over here I'm going to get a shot of also. Lift it up a little. I need to get a peony support for this one. These are still looking good, and there'll be some more 
to bloom out on it because there's still some more buds. This little reddish pink bloom is called Keys of Heaven. And I love this sweet little dianthus here because it smells so nice. A lot of the dianthus, I don't notice the scent, but this one usually puts up a scent so pretty that I can actually smell it as I walk by. This little pot is still looking good. I might need to put some water in here. These little coleus are kind of looking like they need a drink, even though we've had some rain. And that one needs to be broken on off. It was about off anyway. But it's looking good. It's like we'll have yellow iris open in a few days. Pretty pink dianthus and sedum. Some red dianthus. pretty blue iris some of the roses are opening up I noticed downtown a lot of their roses are in full bloom and this is called false indigo and in white and I really like it. it it's a late spring bloomer and it its bloom is really just this little it looks more like a bud even when it's in full bloom. It just looks like big fat white buds. Another clematis bloom. I did these three pots yesterday. I kind of try to do them sooner this year because last year they were the last ones I did and I felt like I was never going to get around to them. But I did go ahead and put a spike in the top of each one with rose moss. And I had told you there was something growing in the bottom ones. So actually it was in the top and the bottom. And it was rose moss is what was growing in them. So actually there may be a few little rose moss in the bottom pots. But I took most of it out and put it in other pots. And I used the calabrachoa mainly for these because... Last year, the calabrachoa had in this end pot right, right here did the best for me that I've ever had it to do. So I thought maybe it likes this pot because they do like the cocoa liner pots. If you can keep them uh, wet without being soggy wet, they like to be moist but not wet. And so hopefully this will work again. And hopefully they'll all work because I put some calabrachoa in each one of these pots. Wouldn't it be beautiful if all of them get as full and beautiful as this one got last year? My little golden caria is winding down its bloom, but it's still a pretty little bush. And actually it will put more bloom on a little, a few all through the year and probably a pretty good showing in the fall. And down this a little pathway on either side. I have the irises on one side. And then on the other side I have peonies and daylilies. So right now the peonies, oh and also the clematis. I have several clematis. And this of course is the biggest one that's making a showing right now. Oh I do see a darker blue right back here. I'll have to come down and get for you if I can new stuff where I can get where I can see it oh my hands look so terrible I um, I did have nails you can look back and see them but uh, I have no nails now absolutely none they're like past the nail and into the quick and they just look horrible I'll go around and show you some of what I've been doing Here in a little bit oh, there's a pretty bloom right back there but there's a 
just a second I'm gonna have to clean the ugly bloom away so I can show you the pretty bloom okay there it is isn't that pretty There's some pretty reddish brown iris. The irises are my husband's favorite flower. And I didn't get this one on for you before the rain. Took it down a bit. It's looking scraggly, but isn't that a pretty color, that yellow and white together? Here's where I put some of the rose moss that was in the bottom parts of the pots that I put my color bachella in. And this is a new little decor in my garden. It's a heart. And you put a little pot in there and I may, that pot may be a little too heavy for it, but I'm going to try it there. And I put gara or swirling butterflies in that little pot. We'll see how that looks. And this is one of the pots I did this morning. I also did these two pots. They're so small right now you can't tell a whole lot. But they're kind of the befores too because hopefully they'll grow up and be beautiful. I love this pretty clematis. Look how pale the older ones are once they mature. And then how bright and that pretty stripe on the new ones that come out. So now we're getting into where there's a great mess because my husband came out and trimmed these tr uh, bushes back for me. Which I, I like them trimmed away from my path so I can go through it. And then I don't like my uh, lilac bush to get so big that you can't see over it or around it to see the rest of the garden so he did all that for me which was wonderful to have that done and then I've been well I showed you some of the pots I did and then here's another one right over here I did this one this morning hopefully that'll be pretty as it grows up and then right behind it here I did this one which looks kind of scraggly right now but this is a mandevilla and I looked for one last year and never did find one so this year I, I was able to and I just love this hopefully it'll take off and go and go all the way up this little tomato cage and be as pretty as if it were on a, a pretty old blisk <laughs> see I'm not done yet by any means but um, I thought I would take a break. I definitely deserve a break. Even my husband said I have a great worth ethic, which I said thank you. I got that from my dad. I did this little pot. This one is my water garden and all this stuff came back from last year. I did put one Siberian iris in there and it's called Shakers. It may be called Shakers Prayer Siberian Iris. I'm not sure, but it's beautiful. This is where I got my new garden clothes broke in and ruined. And <laughs> I just gave up. I gave up. But if anybody wonders if the Trinity plant or what else is it called? I had to get a new battery. But I was saying... If anybody wonders if Widow's Tears or the Trinity plant is invasive, well, yes, it is. And it's extremely hard. The ground was soft, but I could not. This is a bit clay in my soil, and I could not get the dirt off the root. I looked like a pig that had been wallowing in the mud. And my clothes did not come clean even after I washed them. But, you know, they're gardening clothes, so that's to be expected. It was a new for this year outfit, though, because my other ones had turned to sheer rags. But, um, anyway, it's definitely broken in now. And I will get back to this, but honestly, I did this side of it. And I did 
all of these. I had a, this is my little chocolate plant, which is gorgeous uh, normally, and it will be again. I think it'll be fine. But it was taking out my Lenten, it was going for my Lenten roses. There's still some root in there that I'll probably have to dig the whole Lenten rose up and dig the root out of to actually get rid of it. But uh, if things grow up with and, and don't bother the other plant, I'm all for it. But when it starts taking the other plants out, that's when it's got to go. And I, I think I did tell you that it took out my white bleeding heart, the one that my granddaughter first fell in love with plants over. So yeah, I'm a little bit upset at it, but it also, um, I'm going to put some of it in a pot because it is beautiful and I think it will be fine there. It, it won't be able to get out and outgrow its bounds and I don't know why I keep showing this stuff to you because I'm so upset at it. I did not have a good day yesterday. <laughs> did not it was horrible uh, and I didn't get anything else done for messing with this stuff and I didn't get this job finished but I got a good start in it I got a new outlook and I'm gonna get it done oh and look I can show you remember I told you this plant wasn't it's pre pretty beautiful red color look a part of it is just a little part of it here on the bottom has this beautiful red in it so hopefully I will be able to get this back to its pretty color again I'll have to read up and see what makes them it probably needs some type of fertilizer or I don't know what but I'll I'll find it out so I can get it back to this beautiful color and I just finished up these pots this one that's in the back of my uh, water garden I just finished it up and then this one right here So it is hard to tell what they're going to look like when you just first put them in and you never know. Some of them will, will actually could die. I hope they don't, but they could. And uh, you may have to replace them. So you just never really know. But look at this beautiful Concolius back here. When that really grows up, I think it's going to just definitely take center stage at least. I want to have my great nephews over this weekend. I have one that mentioned to me that he has never seen his Aunt Nancy's garden. So we have to take care of that situation. And the other two, I think they loved the garden when they were here. And so we'll just bring them back. And then the baby, <laughs> the little one, he's not a baby anymore. But he's still, you know, squeezable, kissable. I'll have to have him along just so I can turn him pink with all the kisses I'm planning on doing. So, um... I guess I better get busy even though I got a lot done there's still a lot to do This little container is looking good. Sometimes I have a struggle with this one to get it going and lots of times it doesn't really get going until uh, until later on in the early fall but it looks like it's got a good start now. We'll see what it will do and I also if you can tell I did get my gazanias in there they are so pretty to put on this outside of the coconut liner uh, pot because they just are just the right size to, to put in there and to show off good at that angle. I've been mentioning that I've been doing the pots and when you first start out with the pots 
they actually are so small it reminds me of the scripture uh, that says despise not the the day of small things and I will look that up and put it on for you exactly right instead of my but part of it I can remember but um, you just never really know what a little pot is going to turn out to look like you don't know if it's going to do well or or not do so well or be scraggly or just flourish and and become a great beauty Zechariah 4 10 for who hath despised the day of small things for they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven they are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. There's another beautiful iris this morning. I hear some of my neighbor's dogs are excited about something. So you'll hear them in the background, I'm sure. And I wanted to come around to the front side of this little pot so you can see it also. And I had a much better day the day after my <laughs> trying to get all that invasive um, Trinity plant or widow's tears out. It just really got invasive uh, in that one that one area or a couple areas actually. And then I have little starts in other places too that I'm just going to have to get out of there. And because they're not invasive uh, through seed, but just through the root, I'm going to try to put some of them in pots. But just what will go in a pot is all I want to keep. I do not want to give it the opportunity to just go everywhere. If I could have spent the time I spent on getting rid of invasive plants, on something I really enjoyed or something that would um, benefit the garden in some way it would have been a whole lot better it's no fun to be out here hours on end sometimes days on end just trying to get rid of an, of an invasive plant and I've done it I've done it with the annual salvia I did it with goldenrod um, I'm not thinking of what all, but there has been several things that I actually did spend a lot of time, and now I'm going to have to do that with the um, with the Trinity plant. So, but I do want to get it out there. I'm out of there. I'm trying to get rid of the invasive plant, so it'll be a little bit easier for me because it has been really hard to get all this in. At some point, I know I'm going to cut back, but I'm going to actually have to start cutting back in the winter time and remove the pots because when I leave them there until spring and I start planting, I just want to get everything filled up. So I've got to make a determination what I want to keep and what I don't want to keep and, and just try to go from there. But this year we're just going to fill them all up and enjoy them all one more time. And hopefully it won't really be making it smaller when we do get rid of some of them because um, because I think we can get them in uh, a larger pot. <laughs> I got some kids running down this street there on their bicycles uh, making noises now. But uh, I think we can just get larger pots and just uh, make certain things without all the little pots. But when you get used to something, it's kind of hard to make a change. At least it is for me. I pretty much live in a rut anyway and I actually like a rut. <laughs> familiar 
familiarity and I'm quite sure if you would have told me on any one of those plants if I would have just listened to someone who told me they're they're going to be too invasive you won't really want that uh, my friend Natalie tried to tell me that about a trumpet mic but I just had to have one so I think we all have to learn from our own uh, I'll say mistakes, but honestly, I don't believe it was a mistake for me to have that trumpet vine. I totally enjoyed it as long as we had it, but it is too much. It's too much work to try to keep the garden going and do whatever it needs as well as fight the invasive stuff. So I'm going to try to get rid of mu as much of it as I can. Just the invasive stuff, though. You get this pretty pink bacopa. I just love that. And I noticed that because I wanted these two colors together, I forgot to think about where I'm putting this because this is a calabrachoa, this little orange one. Uh, and the other one is a fan flower. And they look so good together. I wanted them like that, but I did not want to put it in a regular pot anymore, not the Calabrachoa, because they, so far for me, they will do well until about June, and then in July they'll just start going away, and, and they won't last. So I may actually end up taking this out and put in, putting it in a coconut liner pot because they just seem to have a much better chance in a coconut coconut liner pot one that's deep enough that they can stay moist and it goes right through so they don't stay wet and then also um, I've noticed that they in Oklahoma anyway they they love Sun it says and I'm sure they do but they also need some shade that Oklahoma scorching Sun is too much for them it's proved to be and I've got this one little, um, this is sometimes called watermelon coleus and sometimes called rose coleus. And I've got it with this beautiful little lipstick pink, impatient. And that's the way I like it. These two seem to just be perfect for each other. And my plan was to get some more of the lipstick impatience to go with this little coleus. But um, I forgot to get them and so I did end up getting these little uh, kind of cream sickle color when I love this color but I don't know if it's going to be the perfect one to go with this coleus but we're going to try it it looks pretty even if it's not as pretty as the other color with it I think I'm going to like it and you may notice that I got all of this done yesterday all of this uh, the plants that I had out here are not there now. That one you see is going to our daughter, Laura. Uh, it's in that pot. It's a hollyhock. And then this one right up here that uh, is still left, right here, is a, a major wheeler honeysuckle. Not honeysuckle, no. Um, yes, it is. Just a minute. I'm going to have to look at that. I'm going to have to look at that and make sure what I'm talking about. I think it's, is it honeysuckle? Yes, honeysuckle major wheeler. So um, that's the one that's not supposed to be invasive. And I will want to put that at my, where my trumpet vine was. And it's, the area is not really quite ready to put it there, or I would have put it in there too. So soon, hopefully, I will get that done. I think my husband's out there right now straightening that uh, trellis up for me. It's actually an old umbrella clothesline, but it works perfectly for an umbrella-shaped trellis. And yes, that's what he's doing. I'm worried about my little tree. It's turning yellow on me. I hate that. I hope it will come out of it. I think this is a pretty yellow color. It's supposed to be in the fall, but it's not fall. So yes, I am very concerned about my little weeping willow. It's 
So I think I've got it all pretty much ready for the boys to come. I've got four little ones coming, not not real little, but they're just go gorgeous little boys, so that's for sure. So hopefully the garden will still be intact when they leave. <laughs> I planted rose moss in several of these little pots. And God has certainly given us some beautiful spring weather. Uh, the last several years, it's got hot early and stayed hot and we've had rains oh i was going to get the rain total on here too but we've had rain we've had cooler weather we had one day where i had to get my little um just kind of a little short shorty jumper on that i wear out here during the summer it's just the perfect thing they're all stained up and they look terrible, but I can wet them down and wet me down and be able to function pretty well. <laughs> so, uh, but I've only had to wear it one day. The rest of the days that I've been working out here so far, and this is the 3rd of May. So the rest of the days it's been cool enough. Sometimes I've had to have a jacket on. There's my job that I have to take care of this all this stuff is just going like crazy it's got to be gotten rid of and I hope I can get it out of there without getting rid of my little clematis there it it has never bloomed for me yet and I'm I thought I saw yes I did see a, a little bud right there so it will bloom and I'll get to see what it was since it's been so long I forgot what it was. I love the clematis though. There's not one of them that I don't love. Need to put a little bit of rose moss in this little pot or some kind of succulent. Something that'll stay in a tiny little pot like that. This is my pink Wedgula, or Wedgula, I don't know how you say that, <laughs> but uh, the Harker is still looking pretty. Sometimes it's gone by now in our hot Oklahoma weather, but when I was a child, I don't remember the weather being as hot. Of course, sometimes you just don't remember as a child, too, but I think I would because we didn't have... Um, air conditioning we didn't even have a fan when I was a child so um, I'm very thankful for for that those conveniences now I, I just don't know how we made it without them and yet I do remember how we made it without it and it wasn't fun and even though I got several several pots finished up uh, I there's still a lot that I didn't get so I'm gonna have to do some inventory and see what I still need see a little clematis blooming right there That's sweet so um, so I'm gonna have to come out and just see pretty much how much I do need to finish up my pots for this year let's see if I can come over here because there was another one I did right here too and it's it's one of those that's not looking like much right now it's kind of scraggly but but if it fills out and reaches its potential it it will be very very pretty matter of fact i'm noticing this concolius oh my it stood up from yesterday it was just kind of laying there and now it's just standing up looking great i think it already likes where it's living These are looking good too. We got just a little bit of rain last night. Not enough to even show in the rain gauge. Which reminds me that's where I was going. <laughs> was to the rain gauge to show you that. Here's a little pot I did not get anything in. So I'll want to put that one on my list of things to still 
get ready. And there's another one right there. This Baptisia or false indigo is looking pretty this morning. So this pot needs to be done. This pot right here needs to be done. And the one behind it there also needs to be done. And there's our rain gauge, which we got an uh, inch and a half. So that's very good. We've had that twice now for this spring. So those are some good former or spring rains for the garden. Praise the Lord. This little pot is another one that I need to get fixed up. You can see my little stand is all crooked in there, but I'll get that straightened up and get it all filled up with pretty plants. This little pot, I think I've got it pretty much filled up. Once they grow up in there, I think it will be. And then this little pot, just it's sedum that came back from last year. So I think it'll, it'll be plenty for that little pot. And I think it'll look good. And oh, look, the yellow uh, irises did open up. I knew they would soon because those big old buds. These pretty little roses. I think I'll want to put something tall in this pot. I've got some little spillers and fillers, the verbena and the, I think that's a double petunia. It's either a double or a single petunia. And then I'll think, I'm pretty sure I'll want to put something tall in there with there probably a coleus. I, I love the coleus. They're always beautiful, always colorful. And just, they last well in Oklahoma. Even in our heat, they last well. I am so hoping that what's coming back in here is the verbena from seed of the one I had in there last year. And that it stays true to the same one because it's that gorgeous candy cane verbena that I, I love so much. Look at this peony. Isn't it beautiful? And there's another pretty pink peony. And then there's this little pot right here doing well. And that's some of the calabachoa in the uh, coconut liner pot. So I'm hoping this will just keep going all season. I've only had one to do that so far, but I hope they all do. Now that I've got them all in deeper coconut liner pots and where they get some shade, except for that one in the front that I pointed out to you. And I still hope to get it, maybe to go ahead and take it up from there and put it in a, in a different, in the coconut liner pot, we'll see. And my we'll see was only skeptical because there's always so much to do that I don't always get it all done. I noticed the sedum in this pot was struggling to come back and even dying out. So I actually put some more peat moss and some gravel in there, hoping that it will drain better and that it will go ahead and live in this pot. If it doesn't, I'll definitely want to put something else in here. But I think if I can get it going good again and get the right drainage, that it'll be the perfect plant for this little pot. And the Amaryllis is coming up. This is the hardy Amaryllis. It actually comes up every year here in our Zone 7. Uh, and just does so wonderfully. This one is red. A bright, beautiful red.
so I've got to get busy doing some other things today. I may not be that much in the garden today. Uh, I will a little bit because I do still want to take that inventory. I was telling you about to see what else I do need. But um, anxious to get back and get all that stuff I need to do finished. So hopefully we can enjoy the garden while there is still some pretty spring weather before the heat of summer.